Hey, how's it going everyone? Are you ready to check out another new Arma vehicle? I know I am. Well, it's not exactly new. It's sort of new. We've seen it here before on the channel. It is the Arma Typhon. We did the Arma Typhon 3S review a while back. It's based on their 4x4 platform. Now they offer one in their Mega line, and that is for people that are looking for a lot of value for a low price, and you know, it definitely delivers in my opinion. We've got the Arma Typhon 4x4 Mega right here. I've already unboxed it, already checked it out, and I really think it's a great buggy for just fun bashing. I mean, I've been having a lot of fun with the 3S version. Now I'm excited to show you guys the Mega version and what makes it different from the 3S version. So let's head over to the workbench. I'll go over all the details. So let's start this off by talking about what's new on the Mega version of the Typhon. And the thing that jumps out immediately here is the bright green color on the body. Definitely like the green. I've been painting green on a lot of my vehicles lately. So this really looks cool to me. Uh, there, it's not just a bright green. There's a, a pattern underneath that's a little bit darker. Uh, kind of got a, a streaky modern, uh, almost flame-like look to it. But uh, again, I love the way the Arma graphics have been lately on all of their new releases. And this is no exception here. What I also really like about it is they do give you the tethers with this as well. And correct me if I'm wrong, but some of the Mega vehicles don't come with the tethers. I really like when they have that on there. Makes it easy to keep track of your body clips. Now, with the body off, let's talk about the new electronics to this vehicle. And, uh, you know, it's a Mega version, so that means it's a brushed motor system. And back here is a 12 turn 550 motor. So it will give you some good power. It will definitely allow this thing to, to jump well, uh, definitely roost some dirt and stuff like that. So it is a good motor that will, will give you some action. Uh, what's also nice, you go and run it through water and mud, and uh, it's kind of low maintenance, so you should clean it out every once in a while. Uh, oil bushings and stuff if you want the motor to last a long time. Now up here is the Mega Speed Controller. It is a waterproof speed controller. Uh, you know, this vehicle is actually waterproof, so you go run it through mud and stuff. I've already tested that with uh, our, our 3S version. That one's waterproof as well. Um, but you could run a nickel metal battery with this. This actually comes with a nickel metal battery, a 8.4 volt battery, a uh, hump style pack. But you could also go and switch it out to use with a 2S LiPo battery as well. There's a little tab over here. You move it over in the speed controller to the LiPo setting and uh, it'll allow you to, to use a LiPo battery with the proper cutoff. Um, but it is fitted with an IC3 connector. Just be aware of that when you're, you're picking up your batteries for this. Uh, it's got a nice big heat sink on top. I like that it's solid mounted. There's two screws that hold it down versus, uh, you know, some other speed controllers out there on other vehicles are just two side to tape. You know, those could fall off uh, when you're bashing and stuff. Uh, even the switch has a little waterproof boot on it, which is really nice. Now over here is the Arma High Torque Servo. Definitely gets you going, gives you, you know, a decent amount of steering and stuff. Uh, you know, maybe later on down the road when you, when you want a bit more out of it, you would go with something more high torque. But for those that are getting started in RC, uh, this servo works out just fine. Now I'm going to skip talking about the features because I do want to talk about the rest of the electronics that come with this vehicle. So here is the STX2 Spectrum radio system. This is Spectrum's very basic radio. Uh, but what is really nice about it is there is a throttle limiting switch on this. So you go and set it to 50, 75, and 100% throttle on here. So if you are new to RC, learning how to drive this vehicle, you set it on 50 while you're, you're, you're learning how an RC vehicle works doesn't go too fast and you know it lessens the chances of possibly breaking something and then when you get used to the vehicle you can go up to 75 and then of course you can go to 100 once you're comfortable with driving the the buggy now it is a pretty good radio system it's got your basic trim functions here to trim the vehicle out or adjust the rates of the steering or throttle uh plastic wheel on here which i'm not a huge fan of runs on four AA batteries that's the only thing you're going to need to purchase for this vehicle because it also comes with a charger now i know this is just a basic wall charger but this will get you up and running it has the ice C3 plug on here and uh, you know it will take a few hours to charge your battery pack so but it like I said it, it gets you up and running for those of you that just want to go to the store and get a, a pretty much complete package now that we've talked about what comes with this vehicle let's just go over some of the features of this that that I really like uh, it is based on their 4x4 platform which is a very easy platform to work on we've got this nice rigid chassis here there's a, there's a honeycomb brace in the center of it it's got a pretty large area to place your battery packs and it ju they just simply go in with uh, some velcro here uh, this is a really easy chassis to work on so if you ever need to do any adjustments to it or, or maybe 
uh, change out the grease and the differentials. It's really easy to take off the, the gear case covers on this. Uh, it's really easy to access the, the spur gear. Uh, there's just one screw actually that comes out of the bottom. This little red block here slides out. The center shaft actually is spring loaded and pops out and you could go and take this whole center section out really easily uh, to maybe you know work on your motor or adjust your pinion, swap out pinions and stuff like that. And because this slider shaft comes out so easily in the center, you could go and adjust the slipper easily as well with a, a tool that they give you in the kit. Now up front here is independent suspension. We've got oil filled shocks on here. And, I, and even though these are a plastic shock, I really like these shocks. They're nice and smooth. They've got a, a dirt guard in the front, which just increases the, the lifespan of the shock uh, between rebuilds. Um, so it, it, they just feel really good. They work really well. And I don't think I've ever actually broken one of these shocks. I might have broken a shock shaft on one, but uh, you know I had to work really hard to, to do it. Uh, there's even some shock cap protectors on the front of the shock tower here. The links on this are a fixed link, so you don't have to worry about camber adjustments or, or, or toe adjustments up front. Uh, for the steering you know just really simple just go out and bash and have fun don't have to worry about any anything changing or anything like that people aren't really going to go race this other than for fun uh so the fixed links are just fine on here the a arms up front they've got a really solid look to them they've got a little bit of flex so they'll, they'll move a little bit in a hard crash and then the hinge pins in the center are actually braced by an aluminum plate up front which is really nice and the same pretty much goes for the rear as well we've got nice durable arms in the rear uh we've got those fixed links and we've got the long travel shocks in the rear and even the shock caps are protected up top of the back with the with the extra plates on top of the shock tower uh now let's move on to the drivetrain so we've got gear differentials in the front and rear we've got a slipper clutch in the center and uh, they are a planetary style gear differential all metal gears inside of those uh diff cases the ring gear itself is actually a composite plastic but i don't think i've ever seen anybody strip one out on that so i think armor did their homework there came up with a very good drivetrain system on this. They've got some pretty heavy duty slider axles on all four corners to spin the 17 millimeter wheel hexes. So you could go use any type of A-scale wheel and tire combination that you want that's out there. But Arn did go and put these, you know, gnarly lug D-boots tires on here. They are the 2HO tire. It is a lot of fun to watch this car rip through the dirt. All right, uh, on the back of this vehicle, you can see this big, huge wing back here. It looks super cool. Double deck wing. Uh, definitely helps with some downforce in the rear of the vehicle. We've got basic buggy style bumper in the front. Short little stubby bumper kind of up high in the rear of the vehicle. Not sure how that works. Maybe if somebody does you know, rear end the vehicle, it, it helps out there. Uh, body mounts, got four body mounts. It's a little bit different from uh, like the trucks. Uh, the trucks have some body mounts that are placed in these uh, areas here in the front and rear. But as you can see, we've got four posts to secure the body down. And that's really about it. We've got dual bell crank steering up front. There's a servo saver in there to, to help uh, soften any blows to the servo. And, uh, you know, a, a full ball bearings in the drivetrain as well. So this car is really well equipped for being a budget-minded vehicle. And this platform, it definitely delivers on the performance. We've, we've reviewed this here on the channel a number of times with the, the number of different offerings that Arma has based on the chassis. And it just... It just handles really, really well. Again, I really love driving the 3S Armored Typhon. I think I'm gonna have a great time with this as well. So why don't we head out, have some fun with it, and see how it performs. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, so bashing the Typhon Mega was a lot of fun, but I want to show you guys the speed difference between the Mega and the 3S version. So I've got my test drivers over here, and there's the cars lined up. They're just going to do a drag race so you guys can see the speed difference. All right, you guys ready? Yep. On your mark, get set, go. Nice, there you go. Awesome. Oh, a little too fast. On your mark, get set, go. Go. So I'm back from another exciting day of testing at the BMX track and I say another day because we went back multiple days to drive this buggy. I brought my buddies along with me, Jake and Logan, and uh, they did the primary testing of this vehicle. They put it through a lot of abuse and uh, I had a great time with it as well. But on the way home today, Logan says to me, he goes, Dad, I think that was one of the best RC cars I've ever driven. And, uh, you know, I have to agree because they just had a blast with it and it was super easy for them to drive. And it, you know, durability wise, no issues. But let me back up a little bit. Let me just talk to you a little bit about all the performance of it. And uh, let's talk you know, about the exciting stuff, which is the speed. Now, for them, they thought it was fast. It, you know, they had a great time with it. It got air off the jumps, which they were super excited about. Uh, for me, who, you know, is experienced in RC, I thought it was pretty reasonable for a brush system. Now, you know, brushless is a lot faster, and you guys saw the, the 3S version out there. That's that's what I really enjoy driving. Uh, but I found this to be just fine. You know, I, it, the speed is just right for somebody getting into the hobby and, and you know, growing into it. You'll, you'll definitely have a lot of fun with it. Like I said, it does get air off the jumps and that's the big thing. On the straightaways, long straightaways, it will max out pretty quickly, uh, but the speed is there for the fun factor, you know, especially in the jumping department. Now it's a steering of it, it has understeer, so it kind of just pushes out, which for, for the boys, that was really awesome, you know, because, you know, spinning out from, from oversteering, you know, they get a little frustrated with that. So it, you know, on the dirt, even on the asphalt, it does have an understeer to it. For, for beginners, that's great. If you're just bashing, leave it as is it's totally fine and i don't plan on upgrading the steering system in this at all meaning the servo because uh you know it's just fine for them uh, onto the handling of it i mean this buggy handles awesome this 4x4 platform is is just a great all-around platform for for people getting into it and, and people that are experienced uh you know like on the 3s versions of this who want to get a, a lot of performance out of it this thing handles really really well when the boys were driving it i mean it was going over the rough stuff just fine it wasn't really veering off when it was hitting ruts and stuff like that but the big thing was for, for them was they were just able to pin the throttle and go over jumps and this thing just flies through the air little nose up attitude and lands perfectly every single time i mean they looked like pros when they were jumping it because just the way it's powered the way it's set up it just glides through the air nice and easily and lands just fine so i, I really like the handling of this and then onto durability i mean these guys really really beat it up uh they hit trees with it they ran it into a uh, brush uh, and my son Logan ran it into a really, really deep puddle of water. Uh, so this thing was completely submerged. We would pull it out, just kind of dumped it out, and he kept going with it. So, you know, it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, no damage to the bumper on the 3S version. When, when I reviewed that, I did crack the front bumper on it. But, I mean, these guys were hitting things. It was a 95-degree day out, so it didn't even overheat or anything like that. And, uh, you know, they were having just a great time with it. It was run on 2S for all of of the video that you saw there i uh, just wanted to throw that out so you know what type of performance you get on a lipo battery um but overall guys the, uh, the the mega if you're getting into rc if you like the way this buggy looks it's really a great way to go um you know if you want the the extra bells and whistles you know maybe you could go with the 3s version if it's got the brushless system in there it's got adjustable tie rods and it's got the uh the different slipper clutch on it uh but you know for basic stuff you know no worries just throw a charge battery in and go the armor type on 4x4 Mega is just a great all-around budget-friendly four-wheel drive A-scale electric buggy.